Hello everybody, welcome back to the Hearthstone Champions League. We're in the final match of Group C. This is the elimination match between Dog and Nimsh. The winner moves on to the playoff stage. The loser is out of the tournament. Once again, I'm TJ. Joining me throughout the day, bringing you these matches from Follow Esports. Proto Hype. It's been sort of a long day so far. What have you thought of the matches? Yeah, it has been a long day. It hasn't hasn't dragged though. It hasn't dragged. Um, I've been enjoying myself. The matches have been great. Uh, better than I expected, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a, a rather fitting uh, group finals, if you will, uh, with the Paladin Druid Warrior lineup mirror uh, yep. in Nimsh versus Dog. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how they navigate those or choose to, as uh, both lineups uh, a bit uncharacteristic. Um, We've seen some new things. Double BGH. We've seen uh, a really interesting secret deck that uh, you know no one's really put together before. Uh, competitive spirit really been a house for Nimsh all day, and uh, I I'm looking forward to this next match. Yeah, uh, a little bit different is the lineup that you sort of alluded to there. Nimsh with secret paladin, dog with you know just a standard mid range. Also the warriors. Nimsh has patron warrior, the only player in this group to bring yes patron warrior. Dog with just you know the more standard control war moving into this one so even though their lineups are the same the deck lists are pretty different and so the first matchup of course going to be the mid-range paladin from dog versus that mid-range druid from nimsh and decent curve decent start for him here just stuff to play on every turn that's what you want as a druid absolutely um going into turn five or turn four sorry uh, potential five mana he does have the double quartermaster if he so chooses. He could uh, lock up that two five body and kill off the shredder and the shade. Um, leave him with uh, potentially subpar power on his side of the board. And mm -hmm. uh, Nipsch really doesn't have a solid. Oh, he does have a low that next turn. Never mind. So he does have a he does have a solid play to answer the quartermaster. Um, and I don't think. Other than the, he could opt to consecrate. I think dogs, yeah, dogs really in the tank about uh, whether he wants to consecrate or not here. It's a tough call to make, but it's whether or not you think. Ah, eh, there's not. You have two consecrates. There's not too many other uses for sure. in this matchup outside of you know com combining it with equality. But it looks like he is just going to decide to play the knife juggler. Um, see where this juggle went. I think he moused over the powder shredder. Nope, oh, nope, didn't hit it. Hit the shade. Okay, or it hit I the like face. That. He wanted it to hit the shade. Yeah, I like leaving up the. Uh, oh, wow. Interdate pickup from Nimsh. Uh, really solid with his current hand. Um, I don't think this is a, a binary decision by any means. I think that'll require some thought. And I definitely like Dog's decision to uh, leave up the, the extra. The extra token, although that is definitely heavily heavily broadcasting that he has uh, at least one quartermaster in hand. Yeah. Uh, on this next turn, so I would imagine Nimsh would uh, build this next player on taking steps to prevent that. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't even be super shocked, considering his hand, if he uh, like integrated a force to like clear the board. But you know, it looks like he's just going to stick with Lilith and maybe here at power the one one down. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. Oh, wow. Okay. So he opts to he opts to not innervate and kill the 1-1. One, one. It's uh, an interesting interesting decision. He does get the unstable goal off of the Shredder, but since this became 3-3s, three, three, it really won't affect uh, Dog's board at all. Yeah. Um, honestly, from Dog's perspective, you have a Shredder coming down next turn if you'd like. Um, you could just hear a power and Quartermaster again with a coin. Um, I, hmm, I think maybe you just leave your board up if you didn't if you didn't swipe there, you just uh, kind of let it ride. Yeah, swipe there would have been uh, pretty devastating. Granted, it was turn five, so it could have been awkward mm -hmm. to clean up you know the second two health creature without throwing in the pile of shredder and you know ruining that five that four damage. But right, I do right. think that swipe would have been used last turn because you're going into turn five. If Nimsh has been paying any attention so far today, he knows that Quartermaster is running Dog's deck. This actually was the first match of the day. The, this is a rematch, uh, a match that Nimsh had won earlier, so keep that in mind also. Nimsh took the first matchup against Dog 3-1. to one. So he's going to hedge his bets against that, even though it might have been pretty intuitive for Nimsh to use swipe last turn. And 
he's not punished. Because there's the swipe drawn. So he does, he opts to innervate this turn. Um, hmm. I suspect, I suspect it was probably more right to, to innervate and kill the 1-1 earlier before it got buffed, but maybe, maybe he needed to, uh, wait and see if he was getting any value out of it afterwards, especially since he had the Thoris introduction coming up. I, don't mm. know. I think that was, uh, definitely an interesting, interesting, like, turning point for this game. So Dog does not find a way to deal with the Emperor of Thoris in, so that means it's gonna get two turns of value, and also Nymph can hide it behind an Ancient of War. If he so chooses, which is going to be pretty devastating. Someone's playing with the map. Why are you doing this? <laughs> <laughs> An ancient floor? Really? Okay. Well, that doesn't... He still gets two turns of value out of the Emperor Thorsen regardless. Sure. I guess he just wants to draw further into his deck. Okay. So next turn, he will be able to play Ancient of War for 5 mana. Plus, he'll have 3 mana left over to play a Swipe or a Keeper of the Grove. Yeah, and he drew the Drake into that. Man, that, that draw was really solid. Um, yeah. Getting that up with the Swipe for next turn. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, drawing the cards also gives you more Emperor Thorsen value. So, Definitely. if you play the Ancient of War, you can possibly get 3 turns of value out of the Emperor Thor's hand, but right now, if you play the Ancient of War, you guarantee yourself to get an extra card's worth of value out of the Emperor Thor's hand. Sure. So Nim's showing that he does have double BGH in his druid, which we saw earlier. Mm -hmm. um, if he were to... Well, he can't actually Drake, and he can't do everything that he wants to do this turn with the Keeper, but he may opt to go ahead and silence his turn anyway. Mm-hmm. He can still play the uh, the war. Yes, can. Hmm, it's an interesting turn. He has the option to force clear if he would like to, but going into turn nine, you know, that's probably not something you want to be doing against Paladin. Probably want if you have the ability to use other removal spells uh, in their place. Probably should do that. Um, mm -hmm. Like you said, he could just protect his board. But yeah, swipe swipe seems like uh, the most solid play on this particular turn. Yeah. But Nimsh is definitely wishing that. Uh, oh, never mind. And he's going to play Tempo BGH as well. Although I think uh, playing the, the higher cost of one is probably more correct on that turn. Ooh. Yeah. I'd say not even more correct. I'd say definitively correct. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think of a situation I'm racking my brain where playing the cheaper one would be better. <laughs> or playing the more expensive. Yeah, playing the cheaper one would be better. Yeah, I, I suspect that. Was... There's got to be some fringe case scenario where playing the cheaper one's better. <laughs> well, we'll ask him later. Yeah. Nimsh is the kind of guy that really thinks outside the box, so. Yeah. So he does hit the Savage around 9. And uh, Dog is at 28 HP, so it looks like we're just going to see Drake into war and protecting it. Which yeah. is really solid, especially considering he's already seen a Consecrate. So I'll bet Nimsh is uh, not too worried about. Uh, equality consecrates, to say the least. Yeah. I definitely say so. And that sets him up quite nicely for lethal next turn with Force of Nature and Savage Roar. It really does. Because Dog's not going to even be able to get much value out of this antique heal bot. I don't think there's anything. Well, he could play Belcher. Would Belcher even stop the lethal? Um, I think it would, because it'd be awkward to get through it. He'd have to throw the... Azure Drake into it and then throw the hero power. So he'd be left. Well, he'd throw the. So he'd be left with 6 plus 12. No? I think it still would be. So he's, got, he's got 30 damage total, right? Because he's got the 14 and then he's got the 7 from the Ancient of War and then. So that would be 22 and then he's got the Drake. It'd be 6, 28. So he's. 32, currently 32 damage, plus the hero power, which would be if he opts to do that. Interesting. So he's not hero power? Maybe he doesn't need it. Uh, I don't so, think you can use the hero power to much effect, because it yeah, doesn't right, match up against a such a Yeah. So, I think he's just a little bit off. Because he throws the Azure Drake in, and then he throws his hero power in, then he's got uh, 12 plus 7 is 19, so 23 damage. Yeah, it was... So still an easy cleanup with uh, Force of Nature if, 
if nothing uh, nothing changes for yeah for Jog here. You never if he gets the clear. Yeah, uh, he's still dead. You're never gonna get more than three creatures on the board for that savager anyway, so you might as well just go for it. Sure. And so even though it's not lethal, it pretty much solidifies the game. Man, very impressive from Mish. Yeah. And this is probably the best his druid has done all day, I'd say. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. His druid has struggled. In the last match against Life Coach, he actually won his first two games and then lost the rest of the three with druid. He couldn't find a win. And this match he's getting the win right off the bat so Nymph's gonna take a solid 1-0 lead in the series and Dog is you can tell in his face throughout that match he's, he's slowly starting to have flashbacks from the first match of the day where Nymph actually <laughs> took him out 3-1 to one. so there you have it Nymph takes game number one and will reward you with this beautiful g2a.com advertisement all right, well, Nib still has his Patron Warrior left and also uh, his own Paladin deck left, which is a Secret Paladin. The interesting Secret Paladin, you know, it runs a limited Secret Package. For sure. Definitely some inclusions that we haven't seen, uh, including Competitive Spirit and Haunted Creeper, which is uh, a bit fringe even for uh, Secret decks, building it more like a, a token-esque like Magic the Gathering strategy. Yeah. Normally, you either see one of two ways. You see the sort of the all in on the secrets where you run a, sure. a much faster curve with secret keepers and the full secrets package, um, or you see the, you know, the the lighter secret package where you run just like noble sacrifice, avenge, and redemption, and you run a lot heavier of a curve like with shredders and belchers and uh, things like that. So, uh, looks like we are going to jump into game number two here. And Nimch is going to throw out that Secret Paladin. So he does have Redemption. So the, Okay, so we, we deducted it. He has one Redemption. Mm -hmm. One Competitive Spirit. Yes. Two Noble Sacks. Two Avenges. No, one Noble Sack. I think we only saw one Noble Sack and one yeah. Avenge. Yeah, one but Noble Sack and one Avenge. We don't know for sure if it's not uh, two Noble Sacks. I don't think we ever. No, saw I think it. we do. Yeah, because oh, yes, we did. Because you got yeah. one. Uh, wait, 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 wait. We know no, for we know there's sure one. It's one, right? Yeah. Because he had a uh, yeah. The the noble sack on that one turn was green lit mm -hmm. after he had played the mysterious challenger. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. It's an interesting deck to say the least. For sure. And look at this curve. If he picks up something to do on turn three or four, he's just gonna curve out nicely. Like turn three, if he picks up something and. Turn four, he can play Belcher, Mysterious Challenger, into Tyrion. Yeah, I have to say that uh, Dog's uh, single Fiery War Axe weapon choice has uh, been, been interesting all day for sure. I, I don't know if uh, anyone was really expecting Secret Paladin, uh, especially this form of it, really. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I feel like I've, I've seen I've seen several turns uh, in the early game for Dog in multiple games where not having a, not having a weapon has really plagued him. Yeah. Nip had the option there to just play the Noble Sacrifice, which probably would have eaten up. Uh, I guess it, it sort of plays around Despite. Sure. But uh, it didn't look like there wasn't many weapons played. And going to throw out the Competitive Spirit now. Nip's just trying to bide his time until he hits that, that crazy curve. Right. You also do want to empty sort of those secrets out of your hand before Mysterious Challenger, as long as you play two of them. Yeah, especially if you're... Yeah, yeah. So. E. Zombie Chow, probably not the best, but I guess drawing it early on in the game is better than drawing it later on. Yeah, he'll have uh, something to do or fill his time for next turn, and using the Spelcher to uh, protect the 3-3 three, three and the 2-2, two, two, definitely what he wants to be doing, especially since Dog didn't have the Death Bite last turn. He yeah. does on turn 5, which is even more depressing. It can feel good to save the coin for Mysterious Challenger, but I definitely agree Yeah. That throwing out the Belcher there to apply pressure seems like the right choice. Definitely. Oh yeah, look at his synergy. Knife juggler, noble sacrifice. <laughs> the dream. So from Nimsh's perspective, you honestly just have a gravy train if he doesn't have a he doesn't have a brawl. You no know dog runs one brawl, so Nimsh probably knows that as well. And 
see the knife juggler probably hero power i'd like i think you uh probably see your juggles first although you yeah. can't hit two on one turn if you're not playing the zombie chat so maybe she doesn't want to do that okay i can see that yeah if nimsh was paying attention to the last match he knows all 30 cards and yeah yeah dogs <laughs> control a, warrior deck, definitely so. a useful match to watch if you're uh you're playing someone on deck yeah Yeah, and Noble Sacrifice is going to be played instead of Zombie Chow. Yeah. A lot more power and threat put on the board. and Picks up the Shield Slam, which is a way for him to start fighting back on board. But what he would have wanted there would have been a Brawl. And yeah, most definitely. Yeah, he does have quite a bit of removal, though. So once he can stabilize after this Mysterious Challenger comes out, then he might be in a good spot. But it's how much damage he's going to take in the meantime. Which is going to be a lot, unless he finds a brawl. For sure. Um, having used that competitive spirit earlier on in the game uh, has definitely, definitely been... Or Nimsh has been reaping the rewards of that, I should say. And uh, while this Mysterious Challenger won't be the best ever, um, the Avenge that he gets off of it could potentially be really solid if it brings up one of his uh, one toughness creatures. Um, I think it would be less optimal on, uh, on the Mysterious Challenger itself yeah. uh, against double BGH and what have you. But Yeah. Um, yeah, looking like a really solid game for Nimsh so far. Dog already dropping below 15 on turn 6. Which is not where you want to be in this matchup because it's just going to get harder. Most definitely not. <laughs> I don't think he has enough stabilization tools. Yeah, I... I think I'm unfortunately coming to the uh, same conclusion. Even if he hits, even if he hits a bash, um, even if he hits an execute, the avenge is putting a ton of power back on the board. Pretty much the equivalent of what he bashed away. Mm -hmm. um, if he doesn't do it first, uh, we'll get the knife juggler triggers. Yeah, I don't know. That's this is a lot of damage to be taking so early in the game with no brawl in hand. So we can deduct that those last two secrets are revenge and redemption. Yes. Um, which means he only runs one copy of Competitive Spirit and Noble Sack. And potentially two copies of Redemption and Avenge, but we're not sure. Yeah, I would imagine if he's running one of of Noble Sack, which is probably your most universally good secret, that you're probably only running one of each. Um, especially since his list is so tight. He's playing Aldor's as well. Um, he's playing zombie chows. Like there really isn't enough room in that deck to play uh, multiples of those secrets and more just use it as a value package. But actually, that turn wound up going uh, really well for Dog. Uh, probably a best case scenario as far as like that turn could have gone. Yeah. Um, getting getting the avenge proc on the on the mysterious challenger and having the execute as well as a bash to clear up the knife chuckle before things got too crazy. Yeah. Um, I think he also had to do it in that order. He had to he had to not bash first because of the avenge and just kill off those sludge belchers to make sure mm -hmm. that nothing got insane and he didn't take uh, more damage to the face than he otherwise would have. Um, so that was that was correctly ordered and uh, he's currently uh, looking to dig himself out of this hole that he's in. Yeah, and now he might start to get to that stabilization point. He's able to play just a card in a turn where he's not gonna die. So, which is always a good thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd say so. Always a great thing and. Now we'll see if Nimsh can close out this game. He does have still huge threats waiting in his hand. And hmm. Surprised he doesn't didn't opt to use his face to get that. He wow, definitely could have used life as a resource. Up. A great pickup from Dog there with the Sylvanas. That was he was really hurting for an answer to this Tyrion because it looked like if a mysterious challenger was coming down behind it that he really would just be really out of this game. But nine, ten, eleven, thirteen damage. So he's still a little bit off. That just card you heart doing work. And you know, Nips can flood the board quite a bit here. Uh, he can hero power, uh, plus zombie chow. And uh, try and reduce the impact as much as possible that dog could have reduce the potential chance that dog could have to steal one of the bigger creatures but it's always a little bit risky because if you lose Tyrion that might be the game flipping upside down for sure yeah dog uh, in the current state of things 
having a a pretty a pretty far out chance of uh, of stealing the Tyrion, but that's definitely his way back in the game. And if yeah, there's there's almost no way that Nimsh doesn't see that and just play all these minions. Mm -hmm. And we'll see if Mysterious Challenger pulls anything, but we sort of came to the conclusion that probably only one copy of all the secrets. Yeah, most likely. And you know, a brawl off the top would pretty much win dog the game. Really? Interesting. Just not playing it at all. No no zombie chow. Um wow. Okay. What card so... is that? I can't see it. Uh Bash, I think. You can only see the bottom little portion of it. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be Bash. Okay. Oh, Execute. Okay. Oh, wow. So this is going to be a 50-50. Oh, to steal wow. the Tyrion. Wow. And that was for the game. <laughs> wow. Ugh. And Dog goes ahead and concedes, which means Nimsh takes a 2-0 to zero lead. But, if you're a Nimsh fan, don't get your hopes up, because this, this exact scenario <laughs> happened against Life Coach, and Nimsh struggled to find the last win. His last deck in that situation was Druid, and he couldn't find the victory. This time around, it is going to be the Patron Warrior that he needs to win with, so we'll see. Just needs to win one game. And right off the bat, we're going to go into Patron versus Control. So this is actually a really tough matchup for the Patron Warrior. Yeah, definitely. Um, probably going to see a Mulder Gromash. May, may opt to keep the Inner Rage if he has the ability to, uh, if he wants the ability to draw with the Aqua. But it looks like he's going to push that as well. Um, yeah, I think honestly, like not playing the six six on that in that last game, I think uh, it makes a lot of sense from Nimsh's perspective. Like. Just giving him another another target to uh, to take. Hmm, maybe? Hmm, I don't know. Okay. Oh, that'll be interesting. I'll have to go back and watch that replay later and talk about that. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of that this game. Hmm. It can be risky to play Acolyte this early because it is vulnerable to weapons and you do want to get draws out of that because you're not going to win in this matchup without applying pressure. Sure. And the way you apply pressure is with, is with draws, but I guess yeah, Nimsh I think, isn't uh, too worried about it. Yeah, if Nimsh saw uh, all of Dog's cards and saw that he was lacking a War Axe, he may just try to abuse that uh, on curve. Yeah. Uh, that, little, that little gap where he won't have a anything to be doing. I think that's been true of a lot of the games that Nimsh has watched, so mm. I think it's pretty fair to do that on turn three. Yeah. Hmm. I would have liked to see him keep the Inner Rage, to be honest. Um, he's on. He's currently on Patron Whirlwind. Um, given given that Dog only plays one Brawl, I think it's probably pretty, pretty safe to assume that you're winning the game through Patrons. Um, in most cases, like there aren't a whole lot of ways that you can close the game out against controller with a frothing. Yeah. Um, There's almost zero ways. Yeah, it's it's pretty difficult, especially against a, a bash warrior. Yeah. So I would say uh, I would say I, I would have liked to keep the inner rage if I were if I were in that position. Yeah. Definitely agree. He's got both patrons though, so if he does find an inner rage, he's going to be in a good spot. For sure. Until, for sure. But dog did keep on the brawl, so it's. It's going to be tough. He's going to have to, you know, try and read that there's a brawl and not overextend with his first set of patrons and then go all in with his second set, which is a hard read to make. And it's one of the reasons why this matchup is yeah, just really tough to deal with. It's all getting a, a pretty healthy, healthy armor amount. Uh, he's an Alkalite and a Taskmaster on board. Forces mm -hmm. Lynch to use that second fire war axe charge. Um, he does get a Lothab off the top. That was a welcome draw. Uh, not really having any other any other solid place to to make on turn six without having a, a way to multiply the patrons. Propagate, propagate the patron propagation. I definitely will be using that more often. I <laughs> that is so much better than making more patrons. Or I uh, heard someone reproduce. 
that one can get a little bit more graphical depending on how yeah, you interpret it gets, it. it gets a little strange after yeah yeah a couple pauses <laughs> yeah so i just stick with propagate <laughs> it's much more analytical okay yeah. so nimsh opting to not armor up on that turn uh trying to get this battle rage going uh dog probably realizes that not that it uh affects too horribly much because they'll probably be taking out those minions one by one anyway mm -hmm. but uh definitely something to do so it's it's so hard to start applying pressure in this matchup when you're the patron warrior you, you really need either a really solid curve early and the control warrior has to miss the curve on their weapons or you have to get a big patron turn early on before the control warrior player can draw into brawl or you know enough spot removal to clear them all off so sure such a i mean it's just a really tough matchup and nimsh is going to find a creative way here to try and get a little bit of value out of the battle rage but he's not going to really find anything of significant value that second whirlwind could come in handy when trying to make a big patron board sure yeah, Dog's Hand, honestly, right now, really well suited to dealing with uh, to dealing with everything Patron's trying to do. Um, he does have the Brawl. Uh, it's a little bit far off. He can't really see it in view right now. But he um, does have the Alex Strasso to punish if he if he really wants to, uh, if he is able to clear this board. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he definitely has a lot of options. He has a Shield Block to like, have a healthy healthy armor total. And could Sylvanas. So many options. So, many, so much to do. So little time. dog frantically searching his computer yeah don't know what he's looking for close up a dog's beard <laughs> stubble voice that's what we're all here for anyway in the end <laughs> uh, no, oh oh it's my turn okay <laughs> i guess i might as well yeah yeah hey, uh, doesn't want to give him extra armor so I guess his monitor might have like bugged out, because he, he took his headset off and appeared to fix that before he tried to do anything, so yeah. I, I suspect he was having some, uh, some yeah. visual, visual issues. Yeah, that was an yeah interesting little thing there. And Nipsh is going to whirlwind up this board, but huh. he's got to use both whirlwinds in order to be able to clear off this bear and get in. And even gonna throw out the Dread Corsair. No respect for the brawl, and he's gonna execute as well. So not even wanting to use the health from the fireworks as a resource there. I, I'm not, I'm not sure about using the execute and not using the, uh, not using the fireworks to kill off the Baron Geddon. Maybe it was, maybe it was necessary. Need to do, I don't know. It's it's tough. I I think I would have liked to see him uh, kill off Baron Geddon and save that removal spell. But he has used both whirlwinds, and it's only going to have like limited effectiveness off of a uh, if you're conceding to him having the brawl. So mm -hmm. I don't know. That's an interesting. That's an interesting point. Really interesting, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> he valued three damage to face, and yeah, not taking seven damage. I think if he had damage. saved it, I probably would have been less uh, less apprehensive. But yeah. We'll see. Uh, now this Frothing Berserker is just going to get eaten up by the second charge of Despite, and all of a sudden Nimsh is left with only a Grim Patron to fight up against a near full hand from Dog. Not looking good. Definitely not. And he does have the, the Belcher to follow it up. Doesn't even need to do anything aggressive with Krom, although he may opt to just uh, clear off that Patron so nothing, uh, nothing insane happens later mm -hmm. in the game um this is his second wave of patrons so if, if both of these die which i'm assuming dog will probably catch on to um just like you know shield slam or uh well i guess he can't kill all three right um he needs to gromash and oh that's just lethal yeah <laughs> he just <laughs> with just... cool taskmaster he that's does the, the 20 damage lethal. find it dude yeah. grama's been sneaking up on me all day like yeah Agreed. It's it's been not a considerable win condition for so long. It's kind of weird to see <laughs> it, um, but Dog does find a place on the board. 
Takes game number three. I'll see if I choose that. Yeah. And Nimsh still has to find a win. Nimsh. Deja vu settling in. Not Flashbacks like from not the like life. Yeah, not like this. And he still has two opportunities left to win with that patron warrior. We'll see if he can manage. This is how the first series went, though, as well. Uh, Nimsh did take that series 3-1. to one. So we'll have to see if it's going to be the same score. Dog is going to throw out the his mid-range paladin. And Nimsh, once again, on the patron. Wow, that curve, though, on the coin. It's... Uh... All of the all of the things you want to be seeing, yeah, uh, as paladin against against warrior, against anything really. Yeah, honestly, that's uh, that's pretty much the dream curve. Have have the uh, the mini bot on two after the zombie chow with the option to get back into the uh, the piloted shredder seat and uh, you know suit up a defender next turn or just go with the cog hammer. That's, yeah, that's all the things. And a murloc knight to top it all off. Man, we're just living the dream. Yeah, dog gave a. An eye roll when he saw the fireworks came out. <laughs> I love just watching the player expressions. Can definitely uh, into it quite a bit. I'd say. Yeah. And no death spite though yet for Nim. So this pilot shredder could do some work if he doesn't find a removal for it. That hand is not the greatest from Nim unless he draws into a patron stat. <laughs> So this, he does find the death bite though. Probably the best draw he could have found in that in the deck to try and contest. And Dog now that he realizes no death bite was was like used on turn four to clear off this pilot shirt, he's gonna play the Murloc Knight, but boy is he having a rough day. Most definitely. And he does have uh, a great play with Coghammer this turn, and uh, does have a hero power following it up. Mm-hmm. A potential quartermaster, although we'll likely see a Justicar in a couple of hero powers before a quartermaster does come out, because yeah. we know Nimsh is playing, uh, or Dog knows that Nimsh is playing Patron. One thing we also have to look at is, Nimsh is at 17 health, he's taken a lot of damage so far. Yeah, he really has, and uh, taking another 4 guaranteed almost, unless he opts to go through like a very, very roundabout way to kill the Shredder. Um, uh, it's pretty unlikely, but okay. So he's gonna whirlwind first. Let's see what he gets. Taskmaster really doesn't affect anything. We get another draw. The Brewmaster. Wow. Our favorite friend. Uh, it's above average stats wise. Name probably just skip. Just gonna cool Taskmaster this off the board real quick. And. That board looks a whole lot better than it did. And going Dr. Boom in the, in, on turn 7, Nimsh all of a sudden looks like he's in a pretty decent spot. Yeah, and another Death Spite to protect it as well. And uh, maybe even like follow up with a, a Tempo Frothing directly mm -hmm. after that boom. Yeah. Hmm. It's an interesting turn. He may want to go ahead and get it on the table now, the Frothing Berserker. It probably doesn't stack up to... But it, it, mm, yeah, it's it's an interesting point because if he doesn't, uh, he doesn't want to be using the execute this turn. I, I wouldn't imagine. Yeah, uh, he may opt to, but should maybe like execute shutter hero power. Or, so it gets the draw and it's another draw thing. Not sure if that changes anything. If he really wants to go deep, nah, he won't. <laughs> okay. Oh wait, wait, wait. Imagine, okay, no, you can't preface with that and not say what you're thinking. <laughs> I was imagining a play where he goes boom, double interrage it. But uh, he is going to do the double interage play just on a, a, a safer board with a uh, piloted shutter to protect the yeah. Froth Berserker. Oh, look at that value. Such two, value. Two cards to do what a Boombot does in its sleep. <laughs> so Nimsh holds on to board control for the time being. But, you know, Dog still has a lot of ways to fight back here. And only getting Quartermaster on these two is, you know, not the best in the world, but it's better than nothing. Just guard True Heart, serving some value. Nymph's still really low health, though, but Paladins are not known, a class that's known for having quite a bit of burst. Yeah, most definitely. Um, 
stat wise, you know, probably the only play that a uh, dog had on that turn. Um, coming back to his Tyrion, definitely wants to be able to contend with the frothing, at the very least. Mm -hmm. Kill that off and play the death spite. Interesting. I could kind of see a reality where you just uh, kill off the three three with the death spite and then go face with the. Uh, I think it was would have been a seven power, frothing or whatever. Yeah. Now consecration will clear this up pretty nicely, but he's just delaying his threats here. I guess it doesn't matter too much. Uh, I'm not sure what he drew this turn. We didn't get to see it. It's a little bit delayed at the moment. The hand is. Because uh, the Sludge Belt was in the hand from last turn. So we'll see what pops out of the Shredder. Or did he draw the, sh the Shredder this turn? Okay, he did, I guess. Or the sh Belcher. I'm confused. <laughs> so he... The hand is seems like it's frozen in time. Or did he get another Consecration off the top? Who knows? I suspect he had to play it off the top. Yeah. Yeah, because I remember the Belcher being the farthest card of the right as well. You're not crazy. Yeah. All right, gonna get another draw and build up another Frothing Berserker here. But that's the second charge of Despite's gone. Despite gone, which means Doug's got a free pass to play the Tyrion. Nearly. Yeah. If. Uh... Hmm. All right, there we go. Now the hand seems more normalized. If if Nimsh had just attacked the three three with the death bite and then gone face with the frothing, um, he would have actually had another. He'd be at twelve right now. Hmm. Damage. Oh, yeah, he would have. No, uh, dog would be at twelve HP. Yeah, it's, it's just an interesting, uh, interesting play. Which could have set him up for you know a cruel Taskmaster Grom to end the game. And... Yeah, something something a little more proactive. But he did, to be fair, he didn't have either one of those cards in his hand, so maybe he had to play for the maybe play for the value game. I could see that. Wow! So he can actually whirlwind execute and play Doctor Boom here, if he if he wants to. I can't imagine you wouldn't because you'd brush right. ten points of damage. Wait, did he have Boombot lethal? If he goes boom. And then he, Whirlwind's he, on five creatures, and uh, the Frothing was at eight, right? Yeah, that would be 13 damage from the Frothing Berserker, so he'd have to get... Average three per, per Boombot? But also, uh, he would have to Whirlwind before the Tyrion was dead, so the Boombots could have hit the Tyrion. Ah, uh, you're right, you're right. So, it would, he, he could have. He <laughs> could have. Probably not the best one. It's a possibility. <laughs> And looks like the only way for Dog to survive here is to play this Belcher. And he can play Belcher and then Hero Power and then play Defender of Argus next turn on, you know, multiple tokens. Sure. Uh, I don't know if there's any way for Nimsh to push through here because even if he draws Grom, then he still can't get through both iterations of the Sludge Belcher. Patient doesn't really help at all. And. Yeah, if he had uh, taken the more aggressive line, I think uh, I think Dog would be dead. <laughs> Very dead. Yeah. Hmm. So I think you sort of have to realize when your opponent's going to make the trade anyway, is it really worth it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially on a, a creature like uh, Quartermaster that isn't really threatening anything in particular on your yeah. on the Shredder that was on the board. He did have a two health creature, but I mean, you're pushing the damage now if he's attacking into the Tiny Knight of Evil or whatever that thing is called. Right. That he's not dealing with your uh, Frothing Berserker that turn anyway. Sure. So, while Dog is in a still in a little bit of a tight spot here, he can't play his own Doctor Boom yet because he just doesn't have a way to deal with the, with Nimsh's Doctor Boom. It's a little bit too risky at that point. So Defender of Argus seems like his play, along with the Eldar Peacekeeper. Seems reasonable enough for me. I'm just probably trying to decide where this Defender of Argus is going to land. Sure. Um, actually, going back, going back to that one turn real quick. Uh, I think Nimsh was also considering uh, Eldar as an answer, not just a quality and consecrate. So I think maybe there's a, there's definitely an argument for if you saw Dog playing two Eldars that. Uh, 
like the odds were weren't in his favor for going for going face without frothing and not taking care of that because he may very well have not had an answer to it if uh, it was board got whites or something like that. Yeah, that's true. Dog looks really stressed after that. <laughs> and this boombot could be a hero. He has that. He did that head tilting, uh, exasperated side type of thing that I, I would do after I misplayed. So I'm wondering if he, uh, wondering if he thought he should have done something differently on that turn. I don't know. Maybe he thought he should have dealt with the boombot right away. Um, like after he had taunted up, like thrown one of the one ones in. Sure. But that's a hard call to make because you know that boombot damage is going somewhere. Aldor tanking like a champ. Ooh. I think he wanted to execute that. Yeah, <laughs> that's that so, an unfortunate placement. Yeah, so literally anywhere else would have been better. And now he, I think he wanted to like execute it and hopefully take out one of these smaller creatures so that he could play both Dread Corsair and Grim Patron, but now he just has to play Dread Corsair and hope for the best. But Equality Consecrate needs to be used to try and... That is lethal, actually. Oh, it is lethal, okay. Oh yeah, the 5 damage from the weapon. Yep. He didn't even need the Equality. Oh yeah, he did. No, no, he didn't. <laughs> he could have just Consecrated and attacked it with one of the 1-1s one because he had damage. Flavorful, he just yeah. sort of takes full BM. <laughs> yeah, he just wanted to... Yeah. style points but that means dog is gonna tie it up so nipsh once again up 2-0 now down to game number five so a little bit of a, a of a tough spot for him once again struggling to find a win with one of his decks and, and that's the thing with conquest you need a a well-rounded deck lineup that you know is going to be able to beat a lot and it seems like dog is might be able to take this. Druid is a deck that has a lot of good matchups against a lot of things. There's nothing that it really hard counters, but at the same time, there's nothing that it really gets hard countered by, except maybe Zoo. Sure enough. And uh, it's not every day you see the same player on the verge of being reverse swept twice in the same bracket. That that would be deeply unfortunate uh, for Nimsh, but... Especially after winning his first game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. To get uh... double reverse swept... I would be very sad, we'll put it that way. Uh, but it's looking pretty good for him uh, on this opening hand. He does have uh, a hand flush with minions, uh, mm -hmm. definitely minions that he wants to see. Unfortunately, no weapon for the Darnassus Aspirant, though. Fire War Axe? Nope. It's gonna stick. Hmm. So. Going back to Dog's turn, we'll see an Alkalite on the table. He probably plays the Shredder and then opts to Shade on 5 if his uh, Darnassus Assassin is still around. Uh, he may go ahead and keep her now, uh, just to keep him off of any draws. Um, I'm kind of partial to that play. I think I like keepering, uh, especially against a deck that's so so draw-centric. If you mm -hmm. don't draw you know, a certain amount of cards with Patron before a certain period in the game, um, you're probably not doing too well. And, uh, yeah, it looks like Dog's going to capitalize on that. And you know you can play Shredder next turn regardless. Yeah. Because whether it gets killed, you always have that for option. Sure. And, you know, Azure Drake, you can keep that in in your pocket for... A good time. <laughs> a good time as well, yeah. And uh, Dog, uh, seeing that Nimsh didn't have the Fiery War Axe and had already used the coin, really didn't have a no or knew that Nimsh didn't really have an answer for the uh, the aspirant or should have none at least. Mm -hmm. So uh, interesting play all around. Combo in hand, super early for Dog, and another wild growth. That's incredibly relevant at this point. Yeah, he could ramp into that a lot quicker. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> he wanted something to be able to deal with the board immediately. Because uh, as it stands right now, this Darnassus Aspirin is going to live for another turn. And none of these plays seem 
really that appealing. If he plays Frog and Berserker here, he missed out on damage when he attacked in the Echo of Pain to try and find a better option. Oh. And... <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> well, they're a little late, but better late than never. Hey, we're here, guys. And... <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Sorry, we're late. One turn off of being able to combo for lethal. Wow, that is that is something. Yeah, he gets. Yeah, he probably stick the shredder, especially since he hasn't had any weapons. Mm -hmm. It's just like almost guaranteed better than the shade. Yeah, and to be honest, okay. <laughs> so he's gonna push some some damage here, and will he have it next turn? I think he still will. <laughs> I think. He's going to be able to combo next turn with, most likely, three creatures on the board. Because Nimsh looks like he's going to have to play Deathblade. And... Oh, Dread oh, the Double second Dread there. Corsair is a savior here. I'm pretty sure. So he's got the 8 damage currently on board. So that would be 16 with the Savager. And then he's got another 14 coming from the combo. Which means he would have 30 damage. Which means it's probably still lethal, right? Is it? Alright, so... He it could... Alright. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That is nuts. I get it, dude. <laughs> Nimsh. <laughs> oh, in the second match in a row that he's played, gets reverse swept. And this time, it's going to be his tournament life that is eliminated. A little bit brutal, but at the same time, you have to... Uh, big congrats to Dog, who will move on uh, to the playoff stage from Group C as the second seed, uh, which means life coach, uh, seed number one. He was the first player to move on. Now we have Dog as the second player to move on from Group C. So, you know, what a comeback from Dog. What a comeback indeed. I, I have to feel for an inch there. I'm not a, as a, as a competitor myself, seeing uh, seeing those such close matches come down to that. Uh, multiple times in one day, no less. Yeah, I got, I got to feel for him a little bit, but well played to Dog, and uh, definitely great games all around today. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so that means uh, all the players that uh, have made it so far uh, from Group A, uh, early in the week, a few days ago, it was Kalento and Pavel who made it out of their group. Uh, in Group B, which uh, we saw yesterday, it was Nyria and RDU who made it out of their group. And then, of course, today we did see uh, life coach and dog as the two players to make it out of the group C. So we do have one group remaining. Uh, that group, I believe, will be broadcast on Tuesday of next week. So that's uh, Tuesday the 24th um, at 9 p.m. Pacific time, so the same time we started today. Or I believe it's uh, 6 p.m. Central European time for those of you who are uh, watching from Europe. So uh, that'll be the final one. But it's it's been a fun day today. I'm looking forward to seeing more from these players. And Purple Hype, it was it was a blast casting with you. It's been fun, man. Thanks for the opportunity. I was really glad to really glad to get some time in. Yeah. And uh, do you have any uh, shout outs or final words they'd like to give? Where can people find you if they want to see more Proto Hype action? Oh, for sure. Uh, my Twitter is at fe underscore it's Proto Hype. Uh, you can find me on the followesports.com website along with the rest of our team. Uh, shout outs to Marty, our owner. He's awesome. He's uh, been a driving force in our success, and I uh, hope to hope to see more of the uh, of the casting scene if I have the opportunity. I would love to, especially with such talented professionals like the great Izumo <laughs> And uh, yeah, big thanks, big thanks for the opportunity, and uh, I hope to see you guys around. Yeah, it's, it's been really fun, guys. We appreciate you, everybody, tuning in today. Uh, it's been a lot of fun matches here at the Hearthstone Champions League. But that is going to do it for us. So, again, stay tuned. On the Tuesday, the 24th, is going to be the continuation. That's going to be the uh, final group. Group D will be broadcast on that day. You can head over to hcl.gg slash eng for the uh, English language of the website. If you want to find out more information and the play players that will be competing, but 9 a.m. Pacific time or uh, 6 p.m. Central European time Tuesday. Tune in there. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.